All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about vectors in polar form. Now, you already know how to represent a vector using multiple different ways. So, for instance, if this is our vector, let's call it vector u, uh, you might write it as a, uh, in a column matrix. So you might say that it's 1 across and root 3 up. Uh, you might also write it in i and j components. So you might say that it is... Um, 1i uh, plus root 3j. Now essentially both of those are the same thing. It's saying this, um, this arrow can be broken into its horizontal components and its vertical components and that's how I'm going to tell you about it. Now if I wanted you to draw an arrow there is a different way that I could tell you how to draw an arrow. I just have to tell you two things. If I told you the length of the arrow and I told you the direction of the arrow, you could draw it perfectly. And so those two bits of information, length of arrow and direction of arrow, are how we create polar form. Polar form looks like... So we have a vector, V, and it's in square brackets, R theta. Now R is the magnitude of the vector how long the arrow is, and theta is the direction. All right, so um, the magnitude is easy, it's straightforward. The direction is slightly more complicated. So the direction is always measured from the positive direction of the x-axis, so from there, and it's measured from 0 to 180, and from 0 to negative 180. So another way to write that is that it's between negative 180 um, and 180. So we always express it within those terms in some way. Um, it's less than or equal to 180. So if an angle was going directly that way, we'd say 180. Okay, so this particular one, this could be our first example. If I want to express that in terms of uh, magnitude and uh, direction, so really I'm converting it from component form to polar form. So if I want to convert it into polar form, I need to find a magnitude. So I'm going to say R is equal to the square root of 1 squared plus root 3 squared. Uh, that's going to be 2. So that has a magnitude of 2, that's why I chose those numbers. Uh, and then the other bit is I need to be able to find uh, this angle here. So how am I going to find that angle? Any version of trig is going to sort of figure this out for you, but we have a nice little uh, rule that we can follow. So if we're trying to convert uh, a vector, let's say it's xi and yj, so we use x and y to represent the um, the coefficient of i and the coefficient of y. So we can say that um, cos theta cos theta equals uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse is easy. It's the length of the vector. And uh, the adjacent is that x value. So the x. Um, now, you can use that, but you could also use a different version, which will give you the same answer. Sine theta is equal to uh, opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite is that um, the coefficient of the j component. All right, so in both cases, um, th that's a standard triangle, so I can do that really quickly. I can tell you that in this particular example, theta is equal to 60 degrees. So my final answer here is that the vector u, therefore the vector u is equal to 2 comma 60. Now of course I can work backwards here. I can convert the vector v equals uh, 4 negative 60 to component 4. So first of all, this isn't necessary, but I'm going to draw it because I like to draw stuff. Um, 
that looks like this. Uh, negative 60 is my angle, degrees. Uh, so I can put that in there like that. And there's negative 60 there. And the length of my vector is 4. So length 4, angle, negative 60. And now I just need to come up with i and j components. Now drawing it's useful because I know that the i component is going to be positive. It's moving in that direction. And I know that the j component is going to be negative because it's moving downwards. So what we can actually do is take this formula here and this formula here and use those formulas to find the i components and the j components because that's the coefficient of the i component and that's the coefficient of the j component. So uh, for this particular question, I can say that cos negative 60 equals x over uh, 4. I'll put that in there so that makes more sense. And I can say that sine negative 60 equals y over uh, 4. Now, traditionally, this formula is written a little more like that 4 goes over there and that 4 goes over there. So, uh, the, the formula, I guess, that you would use is r cos theta equals x and r sine theta equals y. In both cases, I'm just bringing that r up there. All right, so uh, solving, the, solving that... Um, I get this particular one is going to be 4 cos um, 60 or negative 60 equals x and this is going to be 4 sine negative 60 equals y. If I put those two things into my calculator I'll get x and y values of so v is equal to uh, negative 2i so the negative 2 is the x value here and Oh, sorry, not negative 2. That doesn't make sense because it's moving that way. Positive 2. And uh, the other one, negative 2 root 3j. Now, you should be able to do both of those things using what you know about standard triangles and the unit circle. You've already learnt all of that stuff in the past. Okay, that all of that is vectors in component form. Converting from component form, to, oh sorry, in polar form, converting from component form to polar form and from polar form to component form.